Hi, I'm Cubition, and this is a tutorial for the song editor and the piano roll in LMMS. First, let's take a look at the song editor. There are three main parts to the song editor. There's the toolbar at the top, the track information on the left side, and the track content on the right side. First, let's take a look at the toolbar. The first button is a play pause button. This plays and pauses playback of your song. The stop button here returns the playback head to the beginning of the song. These three buttons add tracks. This one adds a beat and bassline track, this one adds a sample track, and this one adds an automation track. Now let's take a look at the track info. Each track has this gear button, which when clicked will provide some actions. You can clone, remove, or clear a track of all content. For instrument tracks, you can also assign it to effects channels or MIDI input and output. Next, each track also has mute and solo buttons. This green light means you will hear audio when the track plays. If you click it, it will turn off and the track will be muted. The button next to it is the solo button. If you click it, it will turn red and all other tracks will become muted so you only hear the track that you have soloed. Next is the track controls. Each different kind of track has its own different kind of controls, so we'll go over each one. Triple Oscillator is an instrument track, so if you click on it, the instrument will appear. You can also do other things, like add effects to it here. Sample tracks are pretty simple, clicking on them only opens up an effects chain. There are no other controls for a sample track. Next is the beat and bassline track. When clicked, it will open up that beat and bassline in the beat and bassline editor. Lastly is the automation track. It doesn't actually do anything when you click on it. You can also rename any track by right clicking on it. Let's call triple oscillator Dave. Next is the volume and panning controls. You can adjust the volume of each track as well as its position in the stereo field. It is important to note that most of the instruments and other effects in LMMS are very loud, and as such, I recommend turning down the volume on each track to negative 12. You can always make this louder later. Next, let's take a look at track content. Track content is a grid. It shows what tracks are playing and at what time in your song. To add content to the track content window, all you have to do is left click somewhere in the grid. Each of the different track types has a different kind of container. I'm not sure if container is the correct word, but I don't know what they're officially called, so in this tutorial I will be calling them containers. Double clicking on an instrument track container opens up the piano roll. Double clicking on a sample track container opens a browser where you can select a file to go into the container. Double clicking on a beat and bassline container opens up the beat and bassline editor. Double clicking on an automation track container opens up the automation editor. Next, let's take an in-depth look at the piano roll. To do that, we're going to double click on this instrument track container, which will open it up in the piano roll. The piano roll, much like the song editor, is also a grid. It is a grid of what notes are playing at what time. You can add notes and remove notes by left clicking and right clicking anywhere in the grid, respectively. If you have multiple notes that you want to get rid of, you can hold down right click and it will erase all of them. You can change the length of a note by hovering over the very end of the note, left clicking and dragging to either the left or the right. Whenever you place a note, by default, it will be the same length as the last note you touched. See But you can change this if you'd like. All you have to do is click on this drop down menu and select the length of note you would like to place. You can also change the pitch and position of notes. To do this, just click and drag on the body of the note. To change the pitch, move up or down. To change the position, move left or right. 
Wonderful. All of these functions can be applied to multiple notes at the same time. In order to select multiple notes, we need to change from draw mode, which we have been in this whole time, into select mode. Doing so will allow us to draw a box, selecting everything inside. Then we can go back to draw mode, and we can move and also change the length of each note. A shortcut to selecting multiple notes at the same time in draw mode is to just hold down the control key, which will allow you to draw a box and select notes as long as you're holding down the control key and then switching back to draw mode as soon as you let go. When you have multiple notes selected, you can also cut, copy, and paste them. This is very useful. In addition to these buttons, you can also use the keyboard shortcuts that are used in most softwares, Control or Command if you're on a Mac, Control X, Control C, and Control V. So I will copy the notes we have selected. I will move the playback head at the top to where I want to paste, and then I will paste. As you can see, we now have the same pattern twice. One last function of being able to select multiple notes is the ability to delete multiple notes at the same time. Just hit the delete key when you have multiple notes selected and they will go away. Let's talk about note velocity. Note velocity is a measurement of how intense the note is. Different instruments handle note velocity differently. Triple oscillator just makes notes louder when they have a higher velocity or quieter when they have a softer velocity. You can click and drag up and down underneath any note to adjust its velocity. In addition, you can also click and hold and move horizontally to paint a pattern of sorts. And then when we play back, we can hear the differing volumes of the notes. In addition to velocity, each note also has a stereo position. To see this, just click on where it says note velocity, and it will turn into note panning mode. Just like the velocity editor, you can change note panning in the exact same way. And then as we play it back, we'll hear that each note has a different position in the stereo field. Lastly, the piano roll has a couple mechanical features that make editing music easier. One of them is you can hold control and use a scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. As you can see, no matter how far we zoom in, the grid stays a fixed size. That is because of this quantization. Right now it is at 1 16th note, but we can set it to whatever we like. One whole note, or even one 192nd note. As you can see, it changes the grid size. The grid size determines on what position your notes can have. As you can see, I can have many different positions with the one 192nd, but with the 1 16th, I can only move it to each grid point. Make sure you set the quantization to something that matches what you're trying to do with the music in order to achieve the best accuracy while still having the most freedom. Returning to the song editor, we can see that the container has expanded to hold all the notes we added to it. We can always double click on it to open it again in the piano roll. We can also duplicate this container by holding the control key, clicking and dragging and dropping. Now that we understand the song editor and the piano roll, we are already on our way to creating our first song. The next tutorial will cover the beat and bassline editor. Thank you for watching.